I don't understand why people can't just boil their pasta and then make the sauce and put it together. Five minutes of extra time, maybe. So that brings us here today for a little challenge. I'm gonna give you two of the best one pot pastas I can possibly think of. And we're gonna find out if that can beat a pasta that's completely traditionally made. Is it really worth the extra five minutes of time saving while simultaneously destroying an entire culture's tradition? Let's find out and make this, shall we? Okay, three recipes, two for the one pan people and one for me that I'm not gonna make in the one pan. Now for pasta one, which also happens to be one pot. I'm gonna be honest, I needed some sort of direction here because well, I've never cooked pasta this untraditionally and horrifically, so I sort of worked off this recipe I found that was very popular online. So get yourself a medium saute pan or a large deep pan in general. Add 12 ounces or 350 grams of linguine. Yep, directly in a dry cold pan. <laughs> this only hurts every fiber of my being for the people. Now add 12 ounces or 350 grams of cherry tomatoes, except only like half that because it felt like too much, just being honest. Follow with one yellow onion thinly sliced, four cloves of garlic thinly sliced, half a teaspoon or one gram of red pepper flakes, three tablespoons or 45 grams of extra virgin olive oil, and finally four and a half cups or one and a quarter liter of water. Season gently with salt and bring to a boil over medium high. Cook that for nine minutes, turning the pasta with tongs as needed till the pasta is al dente and the water is nearly evaporated. Stir in four sprigs of basil, torn. You can plate it up, but I guess in the spirit of one potology, I suppose you go ahead and just garnish that with some fresh basil, fresh grated Parmigiano Reggiano, fresh cracked black pepper and maybe a touch of extra virgin olive oil because you feel bad for it. But uh, you know, to be fair, it was easy, not gonna lie. Moving on to pasta number two. Yes, also one pot and it breaks about every rule I can imagine, including the Italian commandment of never using heavy cream in pasta. <sighs> Italians, I'm sorry. First, cut two boneless, skinless chicken breasts into thin sheets. Really, you want it around a quarter inch thick, or maybe even thinner, if you can. Season your chicken to taste with salt and pepper. Heat a large, deep-walled saute pan or skillet over medium high. Add just enough high heat cooking oil to coat the bottom of the pan, something like canola or avocado oil works. Sear your chicken in batches to avoid overcrowding in the pan for about two minutes. Flip and sear for another two to three minutes or until decently browned, and just cook through. It will be tough to get a deep, dark crust on this without overcooking, so don't obsess too much about the crust and try to pay attention to not overcooking the chicken. Chicken. Once the chicken is done, reduce the heat to medium and add three tablespoons or 45 grams of unsalted butter. Once that's melted and bubbling, do a little dance and add one medium shallot, finely chopped, four cloves of garlic, finely chopped, and one large tomato, diced. Season lightly with salt and saute just until it begins to soften and release some Add in two and a half teaspoons or seven grams of your favorite Cajun seasoning. Saute until fragrant about 30 seconds. Add eight ounces or 226 grams of rigatoni. Give it a little toss and add one and a half cups or 375 milliliters of water. Turn the heat up to medium high, bring to a boil, reduce the heat to medium, cover with a lid and allow to cook for five minutes. Now remove the lid. Add in two cups or 500 milliliters of heavy cream, bring to a boil over medium high again. Then yet again, reduce the heat to low to sort of a simmer and let that simmer for five to eight more minutes or until reduced and the pasta is cooked al dente. Feel free to add a lid if you need, but you shouldn't. Just toss occasionally, but at least cook the pasta al dente. Okay, if you're gonna break all the traditions, hopefully there's just one thing right. Now, once that's done, cut your chicken into cubes, add that back, along with two and a half teaspoons or 12 grams of lemon juice, stir that all together. Finally, stir in a quarter cup or 25 grams of Parmigiano Reggiano. Stir and heat that over medium low until the Parmigiano melts and emulsifies into the sauce. Cut the heat and serve with freshly grated Parmigiano on top and maybe a little bit of finely chopped fresh parsley. You know, to be fair, it does look good. Now, last but not least is the carbonara, a beautiful, loving pasta we should all know well. No heavy cream lies, and only seven ingredients, including salt. Eight if you count water, it's easy, basically. So first you're gonna start off with an extra large wheel of Parmigiano Reggiano. You want it to be around 80 to 100 pounds. That's a joke. Yeah, I, I know everybody watching was like, what the frick? Start with a pot of water set over medium high, salt that water generously, and bring to a boil. Then in a cold large skillet, add five ounces or 140 grams of guanciale, diced into quarter inch cubes, heat over medium low, stirring often, until you get evenly browned crispy boys. Oh, look at the guanciale. Oh, I want to give you the keys. Sorry, the Italians don't deserve this today. I don't know what's going on. Add in two cloves of thinly sliced garlic, saute for two to three minutes or until fragrant, drain off half the fat, cut the heat, then once your water is boiling, add 12 ounces or 350 grams of spaghetti, boil according to package directions or until al dente, about eight to 10 minutes, then in a bowl, combine one and a half cups or 150 grams of fresh grated pecorino cheese and half a cup or 50 grams of fresh grated Parmigiano Reggiano. Again, you don't need the whole wheel unless you want to have a lot of fun. Add in four egg yolks mixed together till you get a paste and once your spaghetti is done, using tongs, transfer your spaghetti to the guanciale pan, add in your egg yolk mixture, the rest of your spaghetti, Toss constantly using the pasta water to loosen to get that paste to melt and emulsify into a beautiful, luxurious sauce. It should be smooth, it should be creamy, it should be clinging to your noodles for dear life. And once that's glossy and luxurious, you should be hearing angels singing from the distance. It really depends on how glossy it is. Now, don't turn the pan on and get all fancy during this tossing process because you're going to end up with scrambled eggs. Not good. Anyway, once that's done, place it into a nice shallow bowl, top with some extra fresh grated Parmigiano Reggiano on top, and enjoy. But it's not time to enjoy. Joy. It's time for answers. Is a one pot pasta?
Dante even able to compete with tradition? And is there even a point to throwing it all into one pot? I'm here to find the answers. Let's begin. We have three pasas. Each pasta hurting my feelings less and less. This one's the definition of a one pot, one pan, whatever. Quick sound check. Sounds good. The amount of effort that went into this is perfectly reflective of its flavor. Whoa. If you're just trying to stay alive, this should do it. This is a recipe that I wrote myself, which I don't like, and it was painful to write, because cream is a big no-no in the Italian sphere, but let's be honest, like cream on pasta is probably gonna be good. Sound check? You don't need me to say anything about that. Whoa. I'll be honest, this is pretty good. Sure, there's the argument of like, oh, it's not a real pasta, why are you using cream and you're cheating? When was the last time we complained about MSG being in KFC? Hmm? I have nothing bad to say about this. I would be happy to eat this. There was effort involved, there was technique involved, and it did take longer than this. This was faster than the both of them combined, and it's using traditional techniques, traditional ingredients, and the Italians would probably approve it. Sound check. Not bad, not bad. It's just hard to beat the simplicity of this pasta. Not a lot more effort than any of these two, but yes, you had to use a second pot. Oh no, I didn't. Really? The point is, if you really need to save yourself the five minutes, this is the one pot for you. But also, there's nothing wrong with a good old-fashioned carbonara, okay? Take the time, put a little bit of love into it, and it's probably gonna be good. We're gonna have people vote for which is their favorite. That's one for sure. But you wanna know what else is good? B-roll. 